just a little bit of a reflection on the Queen over the last uh, 70 years. And I've asked a couple of people to come and to join me up at the front just to share their thoughts. Uh, people that were not around at the coronation, um, but uh, I don't think so, Kevin. And uh, definitely not. Uh, but Kevin's going to come. He's just going to share a few words, and then we're going to ask Shirley to come and share their thoughts on what the Queen and what uh, having um, such a, an amazing person um, up at the front of our um, royal family has meant to us. So, uh, Kevin, thank you. Well, it's, it's my thoughts, really. Um, when Nanny asked me to, uh, to, to give you my thoughts um, on the Queen, when she came to the throne and, uh, and what I remember of the Queen's coronation, Harry, how old do you think I am? <laughs> I was just turning four at the time. That was the 6th of February, 1952, and only five and a half when she was crowned on the 2nd of June, 1953. I was born in a three-bedroom semi-detached house in Bradford, and in this house was effectively three families we were living. As a country, we were still in the aftermath of the Second World War. People will live very close together. Some communities, materials and foods were still in short supply or even rationed. But because it wasn't rationed, it didn't mean to say that it was available. The phrase utility became part of the everyday language. And I dare say one of the, some of the older members will remember that phrase. If you manage to obtain an item of utility furniture, it was often very basic, made to a minimum standards and design. There was a gross, gross shortage of uh, houses, uh, though work was plentiful but the wages at the time were very low. I am told that at the Queen's coronation, many people went out to purchase a television set uh, to watch the royal ceremony, but that was only in black and white. The old street would gather uh, into one living room to watch this special royal occasion. Not me though, we couldn't afford one. But such were the times when Her Majesty was crowned. Not just taking on the responsibilities and duties that comes with enthronement, but also as head of state to lead a nation out of the gloom of the previous 10 years. During her time as reigning monarch to these isles, she has seen the coming and going of no less than 14 prime ministers, and she presently is head of state to 15 countries. As head of state, the Queen will undertake constitutional and representational duties, which has developed over a thousand years of history. In addition to these state duties, the monarch has a less formal role as head of nation, where she is the focus for national identity, unity and pride. And she gives a sense of stability and continuity, officially recognizes success and excellence and supports the ide ideal of voluntary service. The Queen is the head of the armed forces. She is also the head of the Church of England. She appoints archbishops and bishops, though on the advice of the Prime Minister. She is a person with a deep faith and was recently described as a very humble and holy person. Each day, a red box is delivered to the Queen's desk full of documents from the government, ministers, and Commonwealth officials. They must all be read and, if necessary, signed by the Queen. Here I am reminded of a scene from that TV series, The Crown, and it's the scene where the Queen takes this old bundle of papers from the red box and turns them over, thus ensuring that the papers there in inverted commas, um, wanted the Queen to read last would now be read first. A piece of fiction perhaps, but I do like to think 
that um, the Queen is uh, more wily enough to see through that little ruse. But in answer to Alice's question, uh, have I met the Queen? Well, sadly, no. But uh, I did get to, to march past her uh, when I was a 15-year-old Boy Scout. Uh, I was selected to be in the group from West Yorkshire to parade in front of Her Majesty at St George's Day Parade around the quadrangle at Windsor Castle. It might not seem so much to you, but to a young 15-year-old Queen Scout who had made a promise to do his duty to God and the Queen, it was an awe-inspiring moment, one that I will never forget. In the 70 years of the Queen has been at throne, which is nearly my whole life, she has been a steadfast pillar to her family, a rock to the government, giving hope to the country and an inspiration to a nation. On her ascension to the throne, Prime Minister Winston Churchill said of her, lovely, inspiring, all the film people in the world, if they had scoured the globe, could not have found anyone more suited to the part. He was completely right. 70 years later, the Queen's star remains undimmed, and no casting agency on earth could have found somebody with such stamina, resilience, and dedication to her role a living symbol to her patriotic duty. I cannot finish but finish with the words that, were, that she expressed on her 21st birthday. We've already heard them today. Uh, in 1947, the then Princess Elizabeth made this important promise saying, I declare before you all, my whole life, whether it be long or short, should be devoted to your service and the service of the great imperial family to which we all belong. This, I firmly believe, she has carried out to the letter. Thanks, Kevin. So, uh, Kevin's reflection, he says he was four at the time, and I know somebody else here that was not four, but she was eight. So, Shirley, would you like to tell us what uh, it's meant having the Queen uh, in residence uh, during your lifetime? Yep, I will. I remember the coronation. Fiona was two, and I'd been told to look after her, but she was wick. And uh, we all were presented with a beaker. I've still got mine. Its ribbon's a bit faded now, but it's there. And we were lucky. We didn't have a television. We lived in town over the shop, so we didn't have a television. We just used to... We went to Bolton Church church hall which in those days was in Bolton Lane I don't know if they still have it now and we all we had to sit on the floor and look at this little screen and I know I kept I heard my mother keep saying keep an eye on Fiona keep grab her grab her because she was off she was wick she was away and uh, <laughs> we, we had a lovely day and I saw the gold coach and then I thought afterwards oh it looks beautiful and I didn't realize that when I was 19 I would go to Buckingham Palace and, sorry, and actually see the gold coach. We, we had, I apologise, we had to park the car in the Royal Mews and I was, I was uh, going to, to the palace to get my Duke of Edinburgh's gold award. <laughs> And it was, you don't, you see these things, you think, oh, that's beautiful, but it was huge. I, I don't know how big I imagined it to be, but, and then listening to the Queen last night on the television, she said it had no suspension. Well, it must have been awful bouncing along in that wood, that wood box. <laughs> and then she, she showed you, she was looking at the crown, and she, there's only he, there's only she, and one of the main people from the tower is out to touch it. And the interviewer said, could you bring the, the, throw, the crown nearer the Queen? And they put it a good distance away and she yanked it forward. <laughs> and she, you must just say, I can't see it over there. And she's turning it round and she's talking about that big diamond at the front, that Keanor diamond. And she said, this is made of the bits. And she'd approach and the diamond was as long as that. I thought, crumbs, if that's one of the bits, I'd like to see the other bits. But... <laughs> 
And she means to me, she's, I have, I've been to Windsor Castle as well, but I didn't march around the quadrangle. I marched up that hill from the bottom because I went to represent West Yorkshire with the guide captain. I was a guide leader and I went with a group and we, we didn't march around the quadrangle, we marched up that hill. And it doesn't look much, but it is when you're marching up it. And we had a service there. Uh, but it's a wonderful place. And I mean, how she's managed to carry on all these years. I mean, I know she doesn't do housework. She's no, she's no problems. She's got staff and everything. But it, it must be. Huh? She's got a Dyson. I don't know. But it must be difficult. You know, she, she, keeps, she keeps going on and... And I don't know if anybody saw her last night, I now know what she's got in her handbag. Did, any, did everybody see what she's got in her handbag? She's a marmalade sandwich. Well, Pudsy Bear was on, if you didn't see it, Pudsy Bear was on, uh, Paddington Bear was on television last night. And he was supposed to be having a cup of tea with her. And he said, she said, would you like tea? So he grabbed the teapot and drank, drank from the spout. And then when he poured it into her cup, there was two drops. And then there was a, some cake or something on the, t on the table and he banged his hand in it and the footman was covered in gunge. And then uh, he sat there saying he was sorry and then he took his hat off and he said, I've got a marmalade sandwich, would you like it? She said, oh, I've got one in my handbag. And she opened the handbag and out came the marmalade sandwich. So we, out, we all know now what she has in her handbag besides, besides a purse. I don't think she's got a purse, has she? She doesn't deal with money. She's a lucky woman, but she's... I hope, I don't know how long she'll go on for. She might last the year out. She might be, get to 100 like a mother. But she'll have to send herself a, tell, a, a birthday card, won't she? But so I hope she lasts a long time. And she's a, she's a wonderful woman. Thank you, Shirley. Wonderful, thank you. Well, I, I watched that programme on telly as well. I didn't see the bit about the marmalade sandwich, uh, but I did see a little bit about it. Um, and. Uh, and just thinking about um, your comments about your sister being weak, I think she's still weak now. Dear me, we can't, we can't keep up with her. She's always dashing off and doing something. But uh, that's, that's amazing, sisters, so thank you. We've already asked Kevin and Shirley to share some words, and I'm going to ask Kath Totty to also come and to share some words right now. So, Kath, uh, would you like to come and share a few of your thoughts about what it's been like uh, with the Queen as the head of our country. Thank you. Morning, everybody. I've come prepared today. Um, when Harry asked, was it last week? Uh, I think Sorry. so. Um, the first thing I said was, I wasn't born then. I wasn't even born when the coronations <laughs> uh, began and ended, but I was a late comer to that event in October that year. Um, so I don't really remember much about the Queen during my childhood. I don't remember seeing any pictures of her or anything, but um, that might be because I was born in Pakistan and I didn't come to the UK until I was nearly six years old. And then I remember the first time I actually saw the Queen in person. It was 1961 when we lived in Ireland. And funnily enough, that same town this year, this Jubilee year, has been granted city status, which is good for them, I think. Um, that was in Bangor, in Northern Ireland. Now, um, I've always admired the Queen um, for her service, her dedication to her, her job, as, if you like. And she's always said it was a job for life, that she would never retire. Just imagine if we had a job like that. <laughs> But um, she's, always, she's always been faithful, first of all, to her faith in God. And she, she's always mentions it in, in her Christmas speeches. She always mentions the birth of Jesus because that's what we celebrate at Christmas. But it goes deeper than that with her. And she's always told us about it. Now, like I said, I've, I've never 
seen the Queen in person apart from that one time. I've seen other members of the royal family and spoken to them and stuff. But um, my daughter, my eldest daughter, had the honour of going to a, a garden party at Buckingham Palace a few years ago now when she was a councillor for um, the, the local council here in Bradford. Um, I remember going all around Leeds one lunchtime looking for a bag for spe specifically for her to use. Just a little bag, she didn't want a big one. I found one in the end, I don't know if she ever actually used it. But it got me thinking, when I was thinking about what I was thinking about the Queen, is that she's a Christian lady. And as Christians, we are all heirs to the God's kingdom. And when we're all up there in heaven, wherever heaven is, she'll be kneeling down with the rest of us and giving honour to God. Because that is the way that uh, we've been promised. We've been promised as heirs that we will receive, be received into the kingdom. Now, back in um, Proverbs, there's a, there's a shek a section in Proverbs. Proverbs, uh, right at the end, is it 31? When I find it. And it says, right at the end of Proverbs, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And that's our queen. Thank you.